It guards Te Paringa from wind and tempest. It has a brooding splendor. The beach is fringed with Bahudakawa, single and stunted in the garden, spreading and noble on the cliffs and in the empty spaces along the foreshore. Tiny red coronets prick through gray-green leaves. Bark, flower, and leaf seem overlaid with smoke. The red is of a dying fire at dusk. The green faded and drab. Pain and age are in these gnarled forms, clutching at the earth, knotting on the cliff face, in tortured branches, dark against the washed sky. Against this majesty, the houses of Te Parenga have a skimped look. They face the sea, unlovely bungalows of wood and tin, painted red and brown to thwart the rodent air. At the end of the beach, before the main road north leaves it forever, a clot of buildings, shops, banks, the council chambers, the Anglican church in wooden gothic, cheek by jowl with the cinema built to last in brick. It's only a hundred years since men dressed as chimneys and black top hats and stovepipes. Their women dressed as great bells, tiny feet as clappers, stepped ashore from a broad-bellied, wind-billowed ship. They brought with them flowers, fruit trees, shrubs, grass, cows, sheep, deer, pig, fish, bees, language, law, custom, coins, Queen Victoria and her views on heaven and earth, the Trinity, Santa Claus and the imagery of snow where no snow will ever fall at Christmas time, a thousand years of history, a shoal of shibboleths, taboos and prohibitions, mm. and the memory of a six-month voyage. 